Hey YouTube, welcome back to my data structures and TypeScript series. In this video, we're going to go over static and dynamic arrays. A static array is a list of elements with a fixed length n. They are called static because the length does not change. Static arrays are indexable from the in, in, indexable index index indexable indexable from the range 0 to n minus 1. This means we can access any element by providing its associated index. So here we have an array of three, six, eight elements, and we say that this element is at the zeroth index, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's eight elements, and the last index is seven, so that's why it's n minus one. So the first question I want to start off with is always why, because I love the intuition behind things. Why use arrays? Well, arrays are a list of items, and if you think about the day-to-day -day apps they use, everything is a list. So Facebook is a list of posts, Instagram is a list of pictures, and Twitter is a list of tweets. It's one of the most common data structures. Arrays are everywhere. So let's see how insertion works with a static array. This is Java-like syntax. So we're going to declare this number variable as an integer array and initialize it. And we're going to get we're going to allocate eight spots, eight elements for it. So then we give the first index zero equals 42. Indices are zero based in computer science. We always start with zero. And then we put eight as the next one, 73, 76, 500, 2, 17 and 159. So you can see the size is eight. And but the last index is eight minus one, seven. So inserting to a static array is O of one, big O of one. It's constant amount of time. It doesn't, it's not expensive. So every time we do something like this, it's constant runtime. The reason why it's constant runtime is because of how the computer stores the array in its RAM. So we think of an array like this, so it's easier for us to perceive, but really how it's stored is in a set of contiguous blocks in the RAM. And <clears throat> And the reason why it only costs a constant amount of time for inserting into an array, a static array, is because the computer remembers the address of the first block. So it remembers the address of, let's say, the 23 block. And then because we have indices, if it wants to access, let's say, this block, the, the, fourth, the fourth block or the third index, it takes the address of the first block, 23, and adds three and it, and it takes the next three blocks over. So it does this, this arithmetic, some calculations, and it can instantly access the specific memory address in the RAM. So because of this reading from an array, a static array is also a constant amount of time. So if, if we read nums one, it's eight. Um, I don't know what this is, ignore this. I'm sorry, my PowerPoints seem to be created when I'm half drunk or high. And Static array updating. Updating from a static array is also a constant amount of time for the same reasons that we can quickly access the specified block due to the computer or compiler probably knowing where exactly that lives in the RAM. And then let's see what it takes to delete an item in the array. Let's say we wanted to delete 42. So because of that, we have to shift all of the numbers to the left. So we shift 88 to the left, which we just did. Then we shift 73 to the left and then 76 over and then 500 to the left, and then two to the left, and then 17 to the left, and then 159 to the left. And then internally, we just leave this here because we don't, we can't put anything, 159 is the last element, so we can't, we don't really put nothing in 159, we just leave it there. And all we say is we decrement the size from eight to seven, and then then the to the public, everyone thinks that the length of the array is seven, so then they just loop through the first seven elements and then this just gets ignored. So going through the runtimes of the static array, reading, writing, updating, and deleting are, not sorry, not deleting, reading, writing, updating are all constant amount of time. Deleting though takes big O of n time because we possibly have to shift every single element over. It costs big O of n, it scales according to the input size. Of course, if you, let's say, delete 159 or 17, it's not gonna take the entire time of entire length of the array but at the worst case you could delete something at the beginning of the array so the the worst case the big cap is actually big o of n and of course searching 
you have to search through the entire array. So that's big O of N as well. You could maybe get lucky on your first try, but the worst case, you're going to have to look through every single array and that's going to cost you N operation. So it's big O of N as well. So the problem with static arrays is that they are not flexible. We have to know the size of the array at compile time. Here's the array that we've been working with and it has eight elements, but what if I wanted to add another element? I can't because there's no more space in this array. So the solution is a data structure called a dynamic array. With dynamic array, we can insert as many items as we want and it will grow according to whatever we want. So we start off with a static array. This is a static array of size one. And let's say you want to put one, so that's fine because there's, there's one block in the static array. But let's say now that we wanted to append two. Well, there's no more space in the static array. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna create a new static array of size two. We're gonna double the length, so one times two is two, then move everything over into the second static array, and then just toss this into the garbage collector, or just like toss it out, and then we can insert two in here. Now we want to insert three, append three, but our static array is full again. So we're gonna create a new static array with double the length. So we're gonna allocate a static array of length four, and copy every element from the old array over. So put one there, put two there, and then put three there, and then throw this one out. So we put one and two, and then we throw this one out, and then put three. Now let's append four, and we can do that because there's space, awesome. And now I wanna append five, and our static array is full again. So we rinse and repeat, and we allocate a static array of double, length of double the size of the first one, so it's eight, copy everything over, put five and throw away the old one. So this is a dynamic array. Every time it gets full, the static array gets full, we allocate a new one with double the length. So looking at the two time complexities of the two arrays, static versus dynamic, we see that the run times for common operations are actually the same. And the reason why you might think that the append of a dynamic array costs more than a constant amount of time because in the beginning, each time we inserted into the array, there were some times when we had to copy each element over. So you might think that's something like O of N or maybe N squared, but this does not happen enough for it to be considered worse than constant amount of time. The, at first, it seems like we're doing a lot of doublings, a lot of reallocations, but when the array grows to a large input size, it's going to keep it's going to be exponentially grown, right? It's going to grow into 8, length 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So the amount of time that we pay at first pays off in the end when we have constant amount of inserts like 5, now we can insert 6, 7, and 8 very quickly. So the amortized time is actually constant time. Even though the dynamic array and static array are similar in terms of run times, the dynamic array is probably your best bet 99% of the time because of course it's dynamic. The static array is static. You don't, it doesn't grow at runtime. You have to know your size of the static array at compile time and the dynamic array can not grow as big as you want. So of course the dynamic array always probably wins in every scenario. And dynamic arrays are actually built into JavaScript. Some languages do not have dynamic arrays built in, like C, and you have to make your own dynamic array. Let's hop into some code and work with some dynamic arrays. So in TypeScript, we can declare arrays like so, number array, and we will just initialize that to be an empty array. And we can write slash update to it in constant amount of time by using the bracket notation, we're indexing into the array. So num zero equals one, and we'll do two, one, two, two, three. And we can also write to the end of the array, which is nums.push, and we can use four, and we can do nums.push five. But this costs only, this also costs a constant amount of time as well because we're writing to the end of the array. We're not writing into the beginning of the array. If we write to the beginning of the array, then it's going to cost O of n time because we have to shift all of the elements over by one. So if we do nums.unshift, then we can prepend zero to, yep, we can prepend zero to the number array. 
We can do unshift negative one as well. And then let's just constant.log nums to see what we're working with. TS node. And as you can see, we get what we want. We have negative zero, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's writing and updating. We can update like that as well. If we want to delete, delete is going to cost O of n time because in the example in the slides, in the worst case, we're going to delete the first element and we're going to have to shift everything over by one. So the way we delete in JavaScript is with the splice method. And we start, let's say we want to delete, hmm, let's delete number three. So we start at two and we only delete count one number. And then let's log, let's do this here. And then let us log it again. This should actually be four. And yeah, we delete the, th the element with the value three because this is at zero, one, two, three, four. And we delete only one element. And this is gonna cost O of N because at the worst case, we're shifting everything over by one. So yeah, that's it. In this video, we quickly went over the difference between static and dynamic arrays. And now you know that there's not much difference between them in terms of runtime. But in terms of actual flexibility, a, dyna a dynamic array is 100 times more useful in real world applications because it can grow according to how big your input is at runtime. And because the amount of times it doubles is not that often, then it pays off in the long run. And the time it takes when we insert our, our stuff into the dynamic array is still a constant amount of time. And because dynamic arrays are so useful, JavaScript made them default and made them built into JavaScript, unlike other languages, which you might have to implement your own dynamic array. So yeah, that's it. And I'll see you in the next video where we'll talk about linked lists.